Yeah, hello and good evening, everybody. Um, I hope you can hear me. Maybe you can just give me a quick thumbs up or write something in the chat, whether you can hear me or not. Well, whether you can't hear me, then you're not going to hear my message. But uh, um, those who hear me, maybe you can uh, write in the chat. Uh, also, feel free to use the chat to. Um, OK, Joanna can hear me. Very good. Jag kommer också till att snacka norsk. Alltså, vi kan ha detta på norsk och på engelsk. So we can do this in English and in Norwegian. Um, whatever feels more comfortable for you. Uh, OK, so you can hear me. That's good. Um, of course, now these days, everybody's using YouTube. So the sound quality might not be super perfect, but I hope it will be sufficient for us to have this session. So my idea to do that was to um, uh, give you an opportunity to ask uh, questions when you're sitting at home now and learning Norwegian and you're stuck with something and your course was cancelled and you cannot uh, go to school and ask your teacher. So uh, that's basically the general setup. Uh, my name is Vana. for those of you who have not met me before. Um, I'm a co-founder of Scapago. We're an online language school and we publish textbooks for learning languages. Um, and uh, yeah, again, so tonight I'm just here for you um, to answer any questions you might have about uh, uh, learning Norwegian, strategies for learning from home, if this is what uh, you are struggling with right now, um, but also specific grammar questions, uh, specific pronunciation questions. Mm, tips on what you can do uh, if your course is cancelled. I mean, I think many courses also manage to somehow move online uh, from traditional language schools. So maybe it's not that bad for you. Um, but anyway, uh, let's see. So this is the first time I have been, I am, I'm doing such a Q&A session online. Mm, I think you can just use the chat, which is on, I think, this side of the video. <laughs> <laughs> um, feel free to type in your questions, to put in any question you have, something you're stuck with, uh, with Norwegian grammar, with Norwegian pronunciation, usage of words, uh, whatever you're struggling with. Um, I'll just say this also in Norwegian. Um, so, I don't know if all understand English here. So, I can also take questions Norsk. Selvfølgelig. <laughs> um, for dem som ikke kjenner meg, mitt navn er Werner. Uh, jeg er daglig leder i nettskolen Skapago. Jeg har også publisert lærebøker om norsk. Uh, The Mystery of Nils og Mysteriet om Nils, som dere kanskje kjenner. Um, og i dag er jeg bare her for uh, spørsmålene dere kanskje har. Uh, hvis dere har spørsmål om grammatikk, om uttale, om uh, uh, hvordan dere kan lære norsk hjemmefra, uh, så er det bare å skrive dem i chatten, og jeg tror at chatten nei, den er på denne siden av videoen, ikke sant? Um, jeg ser at det er mange som klarer å bruke chatten. I can see there is a lot of people that manage to use the chat, so that should be fine. So um, I'm happy to start uh, right away. Um, anybody who has a question, who is uh, stuck on anything, uh, feel free to um, ask something, and I will try to answer them in the order in which they come up. So we have Brian here. He's familiar with the three funny letters in Norwegian. Yes, oh, when I was in Norway last year, I saw a symbol used on a map that looked like a German umlaut. What is that? So Norwegian does not have German umlaut. Um, what can happen sometimes is that uh, in uh, for for in, in typewriters times um you had um you couldn't make these norwegian special signs so then instead of the u for example the the 
the, the, the O with a line through it, people would write the O umlaut uh, from a German typewriter. Um, the other situation where this can happen is uh, when it's a place name with uh, so with someone's name from um, a German-speaking country, for example. So you have in, in uh, Oslo, you have this neighborhood that's called uh, Grüner Lecke, um, and the E is actually a German U umlaut, but this is just a name. So nowadays, um, uh, Norwegian does not have um, um, does not have umlaut uh, sounds. There is just this A, U, and O. Uh, okay, uh, Doriga is asking, is the mystery of Niels available as an e-book? Not yet, unfortunately. Uh, it is available as a physical book in about 100 countries, uh, and it's still being delivered. I'm a bit amazed that logistics is still working, but yeah. Um, otherwise, um, they have... Um, uh, we have an online course that goes much deeper than the book itself, um, which you can basically use wherever you are <laughs> locked up. And there is a link under this uh, video. So maybe, uh, Durga, this is something that happens sometime. Så har vi Brigitte. Hyggelig å se deg. Ja, hyggelig å se deg også, Brigitte. Eller å lese deg. Jeg vil klare store problemer med å velge riktig verbstid. Er det en stor bild, en post med oversikt over de forskjellige tider? Um, altså, jeg kjenner ingen oversikt, men jeg kan forklare dette uh, ganske fort. Um, jeg skal kanskje forklare det på engelsk. Uh, hvis noen vil at jeg også forklarer det på norsk, Etterpå, vær så snill å skrive det i chatten. Skrive i chatten, jeg vil høre verbstid på norsk også. Ok, so there was a question about verb tenses in Norwegian, and that can be a little bit tricky, uh, especially for those of you that come from languages where there is like one past tense and one future tense, ok? So, um, my basic advice is don't take this too seriously. In exams, they are obsessed about the difference between uh, preteritum and presens perfectum. In reality, it's not that complicated or it's not that, it's not that uh, strict. So basically you can somehow use whatever you want. If you want to say that something happened in the past, you can either say jeg gikk, like preteritum, or you can say uh, jeg har gått um, and say uh, presens perfectum. Um, the difference is that, at least theoretically, when I say jeg har gått, uh, then it means there is some connection to the present. And the connection to the present is usually that there is a result of this action that I, so I did it and now there's the result. So jeg har gått ut av huset og nå står jeg i hagen. For example, something like that. So you have done something and there is a result for, for now. But um, the typical case where we use preteritum is when we're just telling a story. So jeg gikk ut av huset, jeg møtte vennen min, vi dro til på kino, uh, men så spiste vi på restaurant. So you just want to tell a story, uh, something that happened, but no relevance to to now, and um, and 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 uh, that's when you use preteritum. So that's the rule of thumb. If you mix them up, no worries. You will be understood. It doesn't even sound weird. So I have this. Um, I have many examples where Norwegians use the wrong tense. Um, for example, I, you can hear it so often that people on Monday morning in the office. Well, no, you're not going to an office, but <laughs> once you will go back to an office again, you will hear "Vad har du gjort i helga?" And uh, that's somehow wrong because uh, even just asking when you did something is somehow an indicator of using preteritum. Um, and um, also, uh, it doesn't have a result. You're just chit chatting. You're just talking while well, I watched Netflix or met a friend, but there is no connection to the present. So it doesn't make sense actually to use presence perfectum, but Norwegians still do it. Why? I have no clue. So it's not that serious. It's not that uh, there is um, the big uh, drama. Um, preteritum perfectum, um, I don't know if this is uh, something I should explain also. Preteritum perfectum, so jeg hadde gått 
okay this is like in english i had done something so something in the past you're talking about things that happened in the past and then about something that happened even earlier like before this thing that happened in the past so if now is tuesday and you're talking about things that happened on saturday uh, saturday and then you want to say something that happened had happened on friday like even earlier then you would use uh preterit and perfectum but again is not so um not so uh, important i would say just get one past tense form right and you'll get a long way and make sure you learn all these irregular verbs um that is something you should do um because uh, that can make a lot of uh, misunderstandings you know uh, you have yeah i saw yeah i saw what's the difference between these two if you don't know that then you end up in misunderstandings but uh, whether you say uh yeah i saw or yeah i had sucked it's not really a big thing uh, okay, Brigitte, I hope this was helpful. Uh, and as I said, I can also explain it on Norsk one more time, if you want. Milita, another online language cafe. Yes, we will do this. So um, uh, I started experimenting with online language cafes. Um, you might know what a language cafe is. So people who are learning a language, in this case Norwegian, they just come together and uh, meet on speak Norwegian, basically, <laughs> about whatever they want. Um, so, of course, now we can't go to a cafe, but I uh, organized this um, through a Zoom meeting, and now I did it twice. It worked quite well, I would say. So we're going to do it again next Monday at 6 o'clock, and uh, I will publish the link on our Facebook page. So uh, scroll down under this video, you'll find the link to the Facebook page, and uh, there you can... Um, you can uh, yeah, just register um, or, or you just subscribe to the Facebook page. Once I put it there, you will find the link to, to register. And, um, but you can write down the date. Uh, it's going to be on Monday, 6 o'clock, uh, 6 p.m. Norwegian time. Um, uh, yes, so this is free also. Anybody can attend. Uh, you don't need to be a student in Skapago or something. And we divide you up. Um, uh, so I have several breakout rooms, so I can divide you up uh, to different small rooms uh, where you, there's other people that have about your level. And, um, and uh, yeah. Uh, Mariana spør, hva er forskjell mellom en regning og en kvittering? Kvittering med to T. Uh, Mariana, kvittering, ikke kvittering, men kvittering. En kvittering er bare en bekreftelse på at noen har mottatt, at noen har fått uh, penger. Så du betaler 500 kroner til mig og jeg gir dig en papirlapp som sier Mariana har betalt 500 kroner. Uh, 24 i mars uh, under, uh, under Dette er en kvittering. En regning er et dokument uh, fra et firma som sier at du har kjøpt noe og du må betale dette. Det er, uh, så det er en, en teknisk forskjell, vil jeg ha sagt. Uh, Bianca is asking, I used to take, uh, uh, by the way, if I don't answer the questions uh, sufficiently, uh, please feel free to repost and I can go uh, back to it. Um, yes, uh, Brian is saying it was an area in Oslo. Yes, uh, Grunalekka is uh, <laughs> popular for nightlife, which <laughs> I guess is very dead. Um, Grunalekka is, uh, is there. Um, okay, Bianca, I used to take Norwegian lessons, but they were not very efficient. So what would be the best way to plan my own lessons? Um, I'm almost 82. Okay, I'm not quite sure what you mean by your own lessons, meaning um, I guess you want to shift to self-study instead of taking lessons with a teacher, if I understand that correctly. So I guess you would like to know um, how you can plan your self-study, how you can organize yourself. Um, uh, in this case, I would kindly ask you to post which materials you're using, maybe, or, or what you have available. And then I can come back to that question and try to uh, to advise you. Um, Dinge elsker grunn. Ja, grunn er løkka, yes. It's a, 
uh, och du har böckerna Mystery, uh, boka uh, Mystery of Leonins och du läser dem. Det är flott. <laughs> Okay, Yannick, uh, I'm around B1 level at the moment, studying with Niels and staying for simple bad against test. Not struggling with grammar, okay, that's cool, but with reaching the vocab necessary for the test. Do you have a study advice? Well, uh, vocabulary, Yannick, is unfortunately a bit of a long-term goal. So um, the problem is that you can't learn like 20 or 30 new words a day. It's not realistic. So the key here is two things, uh, basically, learn regularly so do it every day but just a few words and then repeat a lot how you do that um absolutely up to you uh, my suggestion is always to try to learn vocabulary in a context because if i just throw like 10 sorts of vegetables at you now and tell you learn them it's not going to work i think uh it's more efficient to to learn them in a story uh that's why we put this uh, niels uh, textbook but also um what about the repetition so for niels there's a vocabulary trainer Mm, you can use this one it's on the resources page so if you're subscribed to the newsletter uh, it's one of the first emails you got otherwise just get in touch with me i can send it to you uh, so you can practice it on your phone uh, again very important to do it every day just a little bit otherwise it can be old-fashioned and use these um flashcards you know uh, i don't have one here but you, you write a word on a on a card and you write the Norwegian meaning on one side and the, the English one on the other side, or if English is your first language, I don't know. Um, and then uh, you look at the English side and you try to guess the Norwegian one. Uh, if you do that with the nouns, please always write the, the article, an, a, or et. And with the, um, uh, the verbs, please also write the other tenses. So you know these, especially like for the regular verbs, it's sufficient to write the preteritum. And for the irregular ones, you will have to write all of them. Um, you will have to write all of them. Um, yes, um, you can do that a bit playful. You can try to, if you have issues remembering a word, you can try to make a drawing or something. Um, you can try to... Um, yeah, make up a story around a word or something, make up a sentence around a word that, that works. Uh, so feel free to be as creative as you can. Um, I have heard somebody who learned the story by heart, of course, only the first chapters, but uh, um, it's also a possibility to, <laughs> uh, to learn vocabulary, although maybe not for everyone. But uh, again, these two things, not many words per day, but be super strict with it like make sure like five words uh for example if you're working with uh, neil's textbook go and write five new flashcards 10 new flashcards every day not more uh stain post stain the same uh write down the words that you don't know and that you find important um and repeat them uh whether you do it with an app whether you do it with flashcards uh, i would say that's the most important thing to work on it regularly mm. Okay, plural pattern pronunciation query are at the end of plural nouns and present present tense verbs. How is that pronounced? So, la uh, uh, No, it's not the same as in words like had. Um, so it's basically a short e and an r like this, like the Spanish r basically, or the French r. So. Uh, in Norway, you have you can say a Spanish R with the tip of your tongue, rrr, but only once. So not like la rrr, or something like that. It will just be la red. Okay, the tongue goes up once. Mm, and or you can also do the French uh, R because that's what they do in the southwest. So in Bergen, Stavanger, Kristiansand, and these cities, they say la rrr and that also works so you have we have a short e and then an r, okay or jeg arbeider uh jeg jobber something like that okay now i have i'm persong <laughs> i'm not sure if i pronounce your nickname correctly is there a resource which tells you which adverbials trigger inversion like no and which do not like kanskje um, so kanskje, basically every adverbial does, and kanskje is a huge exception. 
because concha, uh, 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 firstly, you can trigger inversion with concha. So you can uh, say something like, concha kommer han ikke. Okay, that's correct. Um, the reason why you can also say, concha han kommer ikke, uh, is that concha comes from the expression de kan she at. Okay, so it can happen that, which means perhaps. Um, so basically, this whole sentence could occupy one space, and then you have at with a subordinate clause. Okay, I'm not sure if this goes too deep now for you, uh, Persang. I don't know how far you got into the language, so uh, I don't want to confuse you with this. But the the, the general rule is that concha is just a um, uh, an exception. All other adverbials, I would say, yeah, they, they occupy the first place in a sentence, and then you need the inversion, because you need the verb at the second place. So whatever you put at the first place is at the first place, and then you have uh, the verb, and concha is somehow the exception. But you don't need to learn that concha is the exception, because you can also use concha like, like no, uh, just exactly the same thing. Uh, did you find, uh, says, uh, did you find Norwegian easy since you're from Germany? It seems the grammatical structure is similar in Norway, Norwegian and German. Yes, it is. Uh, and also the vocabulary. So if you speak uh, another Germanic language, it's much easier. Uh, it is helpful just hearing you speak in Norwegian. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Natalia. Uh, I hope I'm reading this correctly. I need advice about developing writing skills. Which books, courses can you recommend, especially when it comes to writing business letters to customers, boss, and love also? So um, writing in general, um, I think it's not really important which material you use, as long as you have something that will somehow prompt you to, to write. Um, in Norwegian, the difference between writing formal and informal stuff is not so big. So that's not really an issue. There is not really a school of how to write business letters or something like that. Uh, Norwegians are pretty informal and uh, a letter to a supplier will, or an, an email to a supplier will look more or less the same as an email to your friend. Um, so there is not so much to learn, fortunately. Mm, I, well, of course, I mean, we published our own textbooks, so I, I, I know that I'm biased. <laughs> you can work with those, of course, they, they will teach you uh, writing skills. Otherwise, um, uh, it might be good if you could get uh, corrections from someone. So if you have a Norwegian friend or somebody who can do it, um, well, our teachers also do it. Uh, we do writing courses where you can send in uh, texts on email and get them corrected and commented. Um, but again, I might be biased because uh, we sell this, so <laughs> don't listen to this advice. But I would say uh, working with a book is a good idea, as long as it prompts you to, to write any text. And otherwise, I would also get someone who can correct you. Um, Jonathan, what do you think would be the best way to practice listening or learning to other dialects? It can be very hard to understand people in different areas of Norway. Yes, that's true. So, of course, I would focus on the dialect where you're living if you're already living in Norway. Mm, uh, there is a there is an amazing resource that is called Nora uh, Nosula, and I will try to find it and share the uh, link. Uh, Yes, uh, it appears. So that was done by um, Anten U, the Norwegian uh, University of Technology in, in, in Trondheim. Um, and they did this one text that is recorded by people from all over Norway. So you can always hear the same text or the same story. It's a short story um, that the same people, or that, no, the different people tell in their native dialect, and you can read a transcription. So by doing that, I think you will get more familiar with uh, what is typical of the different dialects. Um, 
And I think it is also helpful to notice a little bit what is so typical, because the biggest thing is actually this shift with the R. So uh, the East, like Oslo and Hamad, Lillehammer, Trondheim, and so on, and the North, uh, they pronounce the R at the tip of the tongue. And the rest of the country, the Southwest, uh, Bergen, Stavanger, Kristiansand, they pronounce it back like the French. Okay. Uh, so in, in, in uh, Oslo and so on, they, they say Lærer. And in the Southwest, they say Lærer. Okay. So that sounds almost like a different language, but once you get aware of it, um, it's much easier. And it means also that all these combined letters, like RS, for example, the, in the East, they say Noshk. Right, uh, because the, the the tip of the tongue R and the S they get combined, but in the southwest this doesn't happen. So they say Norsk, they say Norskurs instead of Norskush. Right, uh, so this might be a bit confusing, but once you understand that, uh, it's actually much easier, I would say. Um, ding, do I kill Norman? Yeah, okay, <laughs> Mariana. Uh, you don't have Facebook. Uh, Mariana, are you subscribed to our newsletter? If yet, uh, then if yes, then you will get it there also, uh, the, the cafe for um, Monday. Uh, yeah, Conrad was there also. Thank you. <laughs> um, if not, uh, Mariana, uh, let me know. Text me and I can, I can send you an invitation. Um, so I got Milica, yes, uh, Bianca. I use Pove now. Um, oh no, Ding. Uh, also, are the cafes good for complete beginners? Well, if you have started learning Norwegian, say last week, then maybe that's <laughs> not so helpful because you can save five sentences and, <laughs> and that's it. Um, but yes, we have a room for A1 level people that. Um, was a bit too big uh, yesterday. There were, I think, 11 people. I will try to divide it up next time. I was a bit surprised that there is a lot of people that just started. So if you're a complete beginner, I would say maybe you work a little bit on your own with a textbook, with an online course for a couple of weeks, and maybe then you join. But uh, of course, you're always free so just to, to show up. And if you don't like it, you can, you can just leave early. Um... Okay, Bianca, I used Pove, but not Pove, but now I have also downloaded all the lessons from Language Pod 101. Okay, that's cool. Um, I don't know Language Pod 101, but uh, yes, if you can recommend it, then definitely. Um, okay, Mariana, you got the invitation on your Gmail, then it should be fine. Dian, if I could hear and see you pronounce Barna, Barna, Yanta. Yanta, it would be helpful, yes. <laughs> so this is an issue. Um, the, the pronunciation of uh, these words, if you could all have a look at what Dian wrote here, so barna, uh, there's an a, a at the end. Um, uh, so this is pronounced as uh, a in, in dark in, in, in English, whereas the barna, like the et, the t is not pronounced, of course. So, um, the E is pronounced like this uh sound, like this non-definite. It's not an A, uh, it's not an A. E. We don't really know what it is. Um, it's just like this uh, that the sound of surprise, or if you're like, oh, oh my God, what is that? So uh, this uh, right? Barna, it's not much more than that. Uh, yen, te, that's a short eh, like in hell, or in, well, it's a bad example, but uh, it just came to my <laughs> came to my mind. Uh, yen ta, that's again is the a, ah, okay, of like this dark. Uh, just the difference is that it's short, so it's not bar na or something like that. It's bar na, okay. The a ah is short. Okay, Yannick Borhigle, Brigit, I have a lot to do with all of the online learning. Are a chatbot? Du kan anbefale for å høre og bruke daglig språk. Hmm. Altså, dessverre, jeg kjenner ikke Mondly. Nils 2 er sikkert greit. Det er, altså, lydfilene ligger jo ute gratis, så det kan være... Um, um, ja, det, det kan muligens være noe. 
the explanation for kanji yes uh, yeah, that's um, something you don't think of of course especially as a beginner i'll just switch on my light it's getting dark now and just a second please um, i don't know why i'm using the earphones actually nobody i cannot hear anyone it's actually quite stupid <laughs> um anyway uh we have sophia hey is the combination r and s pronounced sh yes even if r is the last letter of a word and s is the first letter of the next word yes very often uh, for example, uh, how would one pronounce Ya um, So it becomes, it, it's not something like Ya Lanashnart or something like that. Um, when you say it quickly, you would link these two. Okay, you would say Ya uh, and it gets, this is very short. Um, because what actually happens is when you say the R, and this is my tongue, okay, the tongue goes up behind the teeth like this. And when I say another letter like T or S or something like that, it would go up again. So instead, in Norwegian, uh, it goes up only once and then it falls down again. So, for example, if you have a word like bort, okay, B O R T. So we don't say bort, it goes up only once, bort, and it falls down. Okay, so these two are linked. And the same happens with R S. So you would say nosh, okay, because it goes up once and goes down. And this combination of the R that is not fully pronounced and the S that is also not pronounced uh, becomes this sh, okay. Uh, if it goes over two words and you say them uh, slowly, then you don't do it. Then you would say yai lon net snart if I want to speak slowly. Uh, when I speak quickly, I would link them. I would say yai lon snart. Okay, so it's a bit, uh, depends also a little bit on the dialect. Again, the people in the Southwest, they don't do that. Yeah, they, they say, uh, Okay, so every, and they say, Okay, so everything is uh, separate. And W asks, uh, do you have advice for B1, B2 studying for the bad against test? Mm, perhaps Barney Yanta, like a F on Yes, so yes, uh, a bit like that, uh, that's true. The advice for the bad against test, I would need to know what advice exactly. So uh, you definitely need to get your Norwegian up to B2 level. Um, that's quite important. You need to have B2 level, otherwise it's not realistic to, to pass a uh, bad against test. How you study for that, I would say is absolutely up to you. Mm, then what you should definitely do is uh, you should get familiar with the tasks in the back end test. So once you have B2 level and you know, yeah, okay, now I'm good enough, I can register for the exam, I can take it. Um, you should look at a few examples. Uh, Folke Universitäta, so the organization that does the back test, they sell old tests. You can just order one or two and, and look at them. Uh, we also have an online course on uh, exam strategy, uh, like knowing how to solve the, the exam tasks, because this is actually quite important. So even if you're good in the language, it's important that you know how exactly the exam will work, uh, what exactly it looks like, what you have um, to, uh, to what, what you have to do. Um, because um, yes, for example, and there, there's a very specific way they check for your grammar skills that is a bit weird. And if you don't know what they want, then you might just lose uh, credits that is unnecessary. Uh, but if you have any specific questions about uh, Vatican System and W, please uh, uh, let me know. Uh, the young not stressed E is called a schwa, yes, so if you need some linguistic updates, that's how you can call it. Mara, har du någon råd om hur man kan förbereda sig för lite pröva här i bergenstesten slik att det blir enkelt och möjligt att förstå vad folk ser eller snackar om? Uh, efter min erfaring är er det inte problem att du inte förstår. Uh, alltså när du har b nivå så kommer du till att förstå. Uh, problemet är mer att du husker det de säger. För du hör det ju meldningen bara en gång som du måste krysa av för vad som är det riktiga svaret. 
det är det vanskare. Så två ting, uh, läs genom svaret, alltså i examen läs genom svaret för du um, för du hörer meddelningen. Och du kan förbereda dig uh, för exempel det att lyssna på radio på nyheter. Uh, og du prøver å skrive veldig fort hva som blir sagt, altså ta notater. Okay? Uh, det kan eventuelt hjelpe litt. Ja. Uh, vet ikke om du besvarer spørsmålet ditt. Uh, hvis ikke, vær så snill å, å skrive i, i chatten. Uh, Joanna, thank you for the help. I just had a quick follow-up. If I'm living in Trondheim, would you suggest learning Trondheimsk or Bukmo or both? Both. Um, so you will write Bukmo and speak Trondheimsk, basically. That's my advice. So that's, yeah, that's what most foreigners do. Because Bukmo is not really a spoken language, you know, nobody speaks Bukmo. If you go to Oslo, then of course uh, you will find people that speak in a way that is very close to to written uh, Norwegian, but not everybody. You go to Eastern Europe, or go like on Tøy and Grønland, uh, nobody speaks like, like they write. Um, and on the other hand, people in Bergen will tell you that they speak Bokmål, but their pronunciation is very different from what you hear in, um, in Oslo, uh, although it's somehow true, so they will read the same text, but it will sound completely different. So, um, I don't know what is your first language, Joanna, but um, in, in, in any case, uh, what's important to know about Norwegian is that the dialects are um, not really linked to the written language. So the written language is either Bukmo or Nynorsk. Um, this is just how you how you write, uh, and uh, then everybody speaks their dialect, and that happens everywhere in public life. So you have someone interviewed in the Norwegian television, they will speak dialect. You have someone interviewed like giving a lecture at the university, they will speak dialect. So therefore, it's also quite accepted actually for foreigners to speak dialect, which in other countries is not really like if you go to Germany and it's not really encouraged for foreigners to learn a dialect because there is a standard spoken language, but in Norwegian this doesn't really exist. So um, so yes, um is a good choice, I would say. Mare, uh, problemet for mig er at de er bare en gang for å lytte. Ja, det, det er det som er problemet. Så uh, da anbefaler jeg at uh, du virkelig, um, altså det med, med, med radio, eller også med, med at altså du kan uh, se nyhetene på TV, og du prøver bare å høre en melding, og så si hva, de, um, ja, hva, hva som ble sagt, eller skrive opp, uh, gjøre notater, og prøve å huske det. Altså problemet er at du vet hva uh, du må huske. Og som sagt igjen, uh, du må lese svar og alternativene för du hörde det. För det svaret kan ju vara för exempel mannen säger att eh ska man A var det blir bra, B eh var det inte blir bra, eh C de ska gå på tur eller vet inte. Eh för de var det är dåligt eller något sånt. Och då vet du allerede okej, okay, jag måste bara förstå eh vad som är med vara och om vi går på tur eller inte. Du vet vad du måste koncentrera dig om och det är väldigt viktigt. Det er veldig viktig i verkningstesten at du vet hva du må konsentrere deg om. Så derfor, uh, du burde høre, uh, eller, nei, du burde lese svaret før du hører meldingen. Da har du mye høyere sjanse for det. Og selvfølgelig, um, du burde alltid krysse av noe, selv om du ikke har forstått noe. Uh, og noen ganger er det også slik at du kan utelukke noe. Altså for eksempel, hvis du hører um, at de snakket om været, men de snakket ikke om å gå på tur, så kan du jo se at det kan ikke være viktig, for det var ikke snakk om å gå på tur eller ikke gå på tur. Ikke Ta A eller B, så har du 50 prosent sjanse. Okay? Så selv om du ikke forstår, kreds av uh, et svar som ser uh, logisk ut. Uh, Dorga... Um what level do you recommend for a person who is seeking a job in Norway? It depends on the job. IT, I've seen people who live in Norway 10 years and are unable to off order a cup of coffee in a restaurant. Um, anything where you have customers, of course. Um, 
at least A2 in service industry, B1, I would say, um, would be better. And if you go like on healthcare or anything where it's really important to know the language, then it's uh, B2. Um, the test, so traditionally, I've always recommended Bergen's testing because uh, it just had the highest reputation. Now, Noshkproven is slowly catching up in a way because, uh, well, not so long ago, there was no Noshkproven above level uh, B1, but now there is one at B2. So people can take this as well. I would say Noshkproven B2 nowadays is also quite a good choice, but uh, Bergen's testing still. Bergen's testing has existed for a very long time, um, so probably it still has the higher reputation somehow. I would say, though, that for um, at least the written part is more difficult. Uh, if you're used to academic writing or something like that, um, then yes, then go for it. Um, if this is not your strong side, then maybe Moshkaplerum um, would be easier. Um, maybe you could post what kind of job you're looking for. Um, that would be helpful. Uh, Leonardo, då, det var akkurat vad vill jag se om jag vad jag vill se si. om <laughs> Kristiansson uttalar. Ja, och så i Kristiansson uh, ser man norsk också. Uh, Bianca, do Norwegians still understand you if you don't speak with her accent? Yes, of course. Uh, yes, yes. So uh, Norwegians understand each other when they they come from different regions so uh, so if you have like uh, an accent from uh, like Trönnesk and you go to Stavanger of course people will understand you uh, you can even understand uh, Swedish or, or native Norwegian speakers understand Danish um, so uh, so yeah so so that's not an issue however I mean choose one accent don't don't have a foreign accent <laughs> uh, work on your pronunciation and, and, and choose one that what you like also, but I would say it's most natural if you live in Norway, then it's most natural to pick the um, pick the accent of the region where you're living. Mara, you put it there. Mariana, if Bukmol is not a spoken language, how would you call the Norwegian you speak? Uh, so when I speak, I speak with a nor northern dialect. Um, when I speak to people learning Norwegian, I try to go very close to uh, to Bukmo, so it's easier to understand. But that's not the like natural Norwegian I speak. Uh, when when I speak with, with friends or something, I speak with a northern accent. Um, Durga, okay, du er ingeniør. Uh, det er lettere for da er det mye som går på engelsk, vil jeg sagt, utenfor. Uh, do you understand me if I speak Norwegian? Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> um, I, I, maybe I should say it in English. So engineers, um, I would say, depends on the, the area. So the petrol industry, I would say Norwegian is a requirement, uh, quite good even because it's also safety relevant. So information might be given in Norwegian only, and then it's important that you, that you understand the, the language very well. Uh, in other areas in the private sector, I would say it's not that important. But of course, also, I mean, you need to understand, I think today Norwegian unemployment hit 10% or something like that, like the worst ever since the Second World War. Um, and these situations, when hopefully in a couple of weeks, things will normalize and, um, uh, people, companies will start hiring again. Still, it will be a huge plus if you're Norwegian is somehow um, to work with. Um, so the more you can, the better, of course. Um, Mariana said yes. No, Mariana, I have to admit I don't remember the question. <laughs> so I, uh, I don't remember what exactly you're saying yes to. So if there is something I should follow up on, please uh, go into the chat once again so I can, uh, um, I can help you. Uh, Tusen takk for live chat. Jeg har lyst til å gjøre det. Kunne vi ha det igjen? Det var veldig hjelpfull. Ja, jeg håper vi kan gjøre det igjen om ikke så lenge. Jeg vet ikke enda når. Yes, så... Ja, Durga, bare hyggelig. 
Um, okay, so I guess there is a, a number of people now sitting at home and learning, and uh, I hope this has been a little bit helpful for you. Uh, if you have more questions, feel free to uh, to put them into the into the chat. Mm. Yes, I'm Elizabeth. I'm studying in my second language at uni, Sami. I've been learning Norwegian on this. Hmm. So basically, my recommendation when you want to learn two languages is to focus on one language that um, that you really need, uh, that is more most important to you, until you have reached say B1 level. So you're somehow quite good at that language, because then um, the risk of mixing the two is not so big anymore. If you're like A1 in two languages or A2 in two languages, then this happens much more often than if you're really good in one language and just starting out in another language. Mm. Otherwise, when you're just starting out with this other language, then this is just a normal uh, process, like your brain switches into foreign language mode and, or mode and, and, and then you just the one language that you speak very well it just comes up. This is something very natural. Uh, it will go away with time. Um, it's not a big deal. Mm, you can, of course, once you're a little bit better with both languages, you can practice it deliberately. Like you can translate between the two languages, for example. You can say, okay, I have a text. Uh, I'm going to say one sentence in one language, translate to the other language, and back and jump to the next language and do this quickly. Um, and you will see that you're training your brain to really open this slot or open that slot and speak Sami and speak Norwegian. Uh, it's a bit helpful, I would say, that Sami and Norwegian are two completely different languages, have nothing to do with each other. Uh, it would be more difficult with, say, Swedish and Norwegian or something like that. Uh, Mariana, you understand when I speak? Yes, okay, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I try to speak, of course, in a way that, that people understand. But uh, again, uh, it's not... Um, any accent you have, uh, except a foreign accent that is so bad that people don't know what you're saying. But if you have a local accent, then people will basically understand you anywhere, not just in Norway, in Scandinavia, actually. Once you're good in Norwegian, you can speak with people from Sweden and it will work fine. Durga, what is the difference between tror and tanker? Um, so uh, tror means, uh, tror and tanker is not the, the big, uh, difference actually. Uh, the big problem is trod and sins. Uh, yeah, tank it really means I think. Uh, it can also mean like thinking deliberately of something. Uh, tank I'm thinking of you. Uh, I have to think of that. Mm, but you can say like uh, yeah, this is mostly how you use tank, yeah, I would say. Uh, yeah, true means I I believe, but I don't know. Whereas yeah, since means it is my opinion that, okay? So yeah, yeah true is about fact that you don't know, that you don't have. So you can say like, uh, uh, yeah, I tror det er uh, 10 millioner mennesker i Portugal. Okay, I believe, I, I think there is 10 million people in Portugal. Uh, you don't know, but it's a verifiable fact. You can just look up the number and then it's not, uh, it's not up to you to believe, well, I believe it's 15 million, I believe it's 5 million, it's not. Uh, but something you can say, I, I since at den filmen är god. This is something like non-negotiable. You like the film, I don't, but well, we can never agree on it. We can never verify it, we cannot. Things with the true you can verify, you can check it or look it up or whatever. Yeah, since it's uh, your own opinion. Mm. Uh, I'm Elizabeth, uh, you absolutely need both. My sum is about B1, B2. Okay, that's good, depending on skill, Norwegian is about A2, B1. So I guess the problem is then that um, Sami uh, words come up when you want to speak Norwegian. I would say uh, that's normal. Um, that's absolutely normal at the stage. Um, just practice Norwegian on the word, uh, think what does the Norwegian word, um, it will go away. And again, if you want to deliberately practice that, I would try to practice 
translating simple stuff back and forth between Sami and Norwegian. But because it will just help, it will train your brain to switch between these two languages. Leonardo, can you anbefale books on likheter mellan norsk, svensk och dansk? Hmm. Nej, egentligen inte. Also, jag vet inte om någon böcker som som behandlar detta tema. Um, det kan vara en god idé att bara ha den samma boka på norsk, svensk och dansk. Alltså du kan köpa Harry Potter på, på norsk, svensk och dansk, för exempel. Um, och så kan du sammanligna, inte sant? Mm, eller så måste jag se si det svärre, nej, jag vet inte om någon böcker. Um, Mara, you had a question, but uh, yeah, that was wrong or not relevant anymore. Mm, Ella, is there a well-known children's program in Norway, like the one in the US, Sesame Street? I'm still a beginner. After learning it for two years on my own, I'm going for kindergarten material. So what I always re recommend, actually, in any language, almost, is, uh, you know, Peppa Pig. Um, in Norwegian, it's called Peppa Gris. Uh, I'll put it in the chat. You can find many episodes on YouTube. It's not really Norwegian, but the Norwegian voiceover is very good. Mm, and I, it has very simple language, and with the cartoons, it uh, will understand much better because it's very like uh, uh, because friends uh, has a bicycle. She is coming with her bicycle, and you see the bicycle, and then you understand. But even if you don't understand the Norwegian word for bicycle, you will deal with it. So uh, I think this I've heard from many students that it's very helpful, even in other languages. Um, Mara, kan det bli nyttigt att praktisera muntligt det att uttala setningen med andra ord och snacka med sig själv? Ja, absolut. Läsa höjd texter eller gentå någon efter radio nyheter. Ja, absolut. Det är en, en väldigt god ting att göra. Um, jag anbefaler egentligen att alla gör det. Läs höjd, snack med dig själv. Uh, så länge du inte har någon att snacka med. Eller, det, det, alltså det På den måten kan du bara öva och snacka norsk, uh, eller vilket som helst språk. Um, a very good recommendation from Mada here. Um, I'm translating it to English because it's so important and maybe not everybody understood it. Um, speak with yourself. Um, it's not awkward if you make a mistake, nobody is going to blame you. Um, but you will practice to speak, it's that simple. Read text aloud. You know? Uh, when you repeat vocabulary, uh, we were talking at the beginning, uh, somebody has a question right about the flashcards vocabulary trainer. Say the words aloud um, because you, you you practice your your lips and your tongue and your memory to pronounce a word. To pronounce a word that is a little bit more difficult. Um, that is absolutely something that I, I recommend. Uh, so, uh, so talk to um, uh, talk to yourself. Mm. Or, or, or poems are actually very good also. If you're um, a bit advanced, you can just look up poems and learn them, learn them by heart. Um, Dorga, uh, is there any other way to say thank you other than talk and tusen talk? Yes, there's many. Uh, so you can say manga talk, for example. Many thanks. Somewhere. And like once you have finished your meal, uh, you say talk for Martin. Uh, something very Norwegian is talk for schist. If you've heard that, that's when you meet someone again after a while, it can be the next day, the next week, the next month, whatever. You meet someone again and you say, talk for just like, thanks for the last time. It's something just uh, in, in, in English, we would say something like, nice to see you again. Uh, in Norwegian, you say, talk for just. Um, yes. Um, okay. Leonardo Tror can be overshot some guests, and I guess that. Yes, I think so, I guess. Well, not you could say, I'm not, maybe I'm not good enough in English, but I, you could say, for example, I guess that's not a good idea. And this in Norwegian um, must be translated with your sins because it's your opinion. Um, it's not verifiable. 
So again, uh, the question is, is it verifiable or not? Yeah, true is about the fact that you can you don't know it, but you can get this information somehow. And then it's non-negotiable. As I said before, with the people living in Portugal, either it's 10 million or 12 million or 15 million. Is, is, you look it up and that's it. You can't say, yeah, but I believe it's more. Um, whereas uh, whether you like a poem or a film or an activity or something, it's up to you, it's non-negotiable. You like football or you don't. It's not. Uh, there is no truth there. Um, so in these cases, you have to say I sins because it comes from sin. It means like what is your look upon it? You know, uh, the, the, so you look upon it as something nice or not, but somebody else might have a different look on it. That's basically what it, what it means. Uh, I like zombie Lars. Uh, by the way, um, what I mean by verifiable is not, it needs to be theoretically, I'm, I'm getting a bit philosophical and since it's really difficult. Uh, it does not need to be practically verifiable, meaning um, you can say a true word at good things, so you believe that God exists, but now it's a thing. And this is, uh, so that's a bit, uh, it's not a personal, it's not an opinion. It's not what you th what you thought it as an interpretation. So um, the the sins is more about uh, I have no clue. Like I, I think these orange um, uh, sunglasses are ugly, uh, but you might like. Them. Um, we can't negotiate about it. But the the sunglasses are here. So although they're here, they're orange, it's not <laughs> something to discuss about. But whether you like them or not, that's that's up to you. Whereas God, it's the opposite. We don't know. Uh, we, we can't really call God now. Uh, but, but at least theoretically, there might be some way of finding out whether God exists or not. And this is why it's that like tool. Uh, okay. Uh, I, Joanna says, I like zombie lords. I don't, okay, I don't know what that is, to be honest. I'm only like A2, but it's easy to understand. Okay, cool. Because of the context and somewhat entertaining. Okay, cool. Uh, so Zombie Lar is something for you to check out. Uh, on list, but yeah, maybe you can go ahead and try that and see if it helps after a couple years. Dian, does everyone know about the Memorized Notes Vocabulary Trainer? Yes, uh, I hope so. <laughs> if not, let me know. Are the voices all native speakers? Yes, rather than a bot. Like they have no, they shouldn't be. Uh, shouldn't be a bot. We uploaded our own audio, as far as I know. So sometimes they, they have these bot audios also jumping into it. But then there should be several ones, and there's always one that is recorded by uh, one of our teachers. Uh, Dion asks also. Uh, but they like they help on the memorized language. Pro oh, okay. Now it's just the same question. Mm, Bianca, uh, recommendations for good Norwegian music. Oh, bro, there's a lot. Um, I suggest you just go on YouTube and type like Norsk Musik or something like that. Um, there's really a lot. I don't want to recommend something that uh, you find horrible afterwards. <laughs> uh, just post crazy. Is there a resource such as Deutsche Welle where one can listen to see the news or an article and also have a transcript of the spoken material? And you can get them read right up. So that's quite cool. It's not the same as Deutsche Welle, but it's a bit similar. And, uh, I think it's quite cool. Rachel, uh, I opine. Yeah. <laughs> Natalia, you're very hygly. The lost video and sound. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Please repeat the explanation of troll. I didn't talk about trolls, did I? When it returns, has everyone lost feed or is my internet? I think, unfortunately, uh, Dian, it's your internet. I'm sorry to say so. Um, Troll, I didn't make any explanations about trolls. Maybe it was something else. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Ella, it was bad a few minutes ago. Yeah, well, YouTube is overwhelmed, of course, now. So, unfortunately, um, we should be happy that we have it at all. I mean, imagine all these lockdowns happening 30 years earlier. It would have been a nightmare. Um, Anna Maria, I learned since as I find that, for example, I find that this ice cream is sweet. Yes, because again, it's your opinion. 
Okay, so the ice cream is sweet. You can, uh, the amount of sugar is non negotiable. So, this is like uh, I told that tea percent sugar is much more in ice cream usually, but okay. But yeah, I sense that for me, uh, for, for example, um, that is your opinion whether you find it sweet or not. That's up to you. I just post crazy uh, Norwegian music, something like a Norwegian equivalent to the German wise guys. Um, no, I'm not so familiar with something that would be. Uh, uh, I don't know if there's somebody here in the chat that might have a recommendation for just post crazy and something that is a bit similar to German wise guys, if, if you know these. Dorico uh, and Ah, okay. Uh, you mean uh, Trud? Yeah. Uh, so, um, so again, Trud is a verifiable fact. Sins is your opinion on something, whether you like your taste. Like the ice cream, I like the ice cream uh, example that Anna Maria posted. Um, so if you talk about the, the amount of sugar that is in the ice cream, that's the Eitrud. Because you can somehow find out how much sugar there is in it, whether it's 500 gram or a kilogram, or you can find it out somehow. You ask the chef or you do a chemical analysis or whatever, you can find it out. So this is Jag tror. Jag tror det är 500 gram socker, whatever. Um, but whether this is too much or not, whether it's sweet or not, that's, that's your taste. That's your personal opinion. Someone might like it, someone does not like it. And this is Jag syns. Jag syns det för mig socker. You know, like you think it's too much, you, it's your opinion. Uh, that's uh, Jag syns. I think it's a very good example, actually. We uh, always learned this example that I reproduce in the Nils textbook. Um, uh, What's the difference? The difference is whether you have read it or not. That means you have read it and you liked it. Okay? Now, somebody else might say, no, I found it horrible. Uh, but means that you have heard from someone that uh, it's good or not, but you haven't. Uh, Checked, so it's not really um, a yes. Uh, okay, yeah, true and troll. We found that out. <laughs> uh, it's true when talking about God. Yeah, exactly. Because it's somehow um, because it's not about your opinion. Uh, that would be whether you like uh, a certain image of God or whatever. But that becomes very philosophical now, so maybe that's a bit too. Uh, the truth that three shares socker is in your, yeah, since then it is now for me a socker, yeah, exactly. So, uh, that's uh, that's the difference between the two, okay. Um, yeah, are there any more questions? I think I'll just stick around. I think there is a slight delay also when I say something and then people put it in the chat until I react. So I'm going to stick around for two or three minutes. Um, otherwise, um, again, um, the Language Cafe, if you want to practice your spoken Norwegian, uh, sign up for our newsletter. If you haven't done it, uh, you can also um, check in the links below. There is the Facebook. Page and I will post it on the Facebook page. The next one is going to be on Monday, so that's Monday, 30th. Yes, Monday at 6 o'clock, 6 p.m. Norwegian time, if you want to join that. Uh, otherwise, of course, our online courses, they are all still available. So the online video courses, our textbooks are still delivered to most places. And uh, if you'd like to have one on one lessons with a private teacher, uh, we use Skype and this still works. So feel free to sign up for, uh, for the free demo lesson. Uh, you have all the links for that um, below this video. Uh, but yeah, that was enough for the advertisement block. So, um, mm, how else do you have? Uh, you know, we have the, is there an online forum where people can discuss ideas? Uh, ideas about what? About learning Norwegian? Or, uh, you can do that in our, on our Facebook page if you want. Leonardo, so first, and talk for Hedra, and talk for Hedra, and talk for uh, just post crazy. Could you repeat the Deutsche Welle on some internet blanked out? Oh, yeah, it's called Clark Thaler. Clark Thaler. No, I'm posting it in the chat. Uh, can you see it? Um, so that's a link you should uh, check out. Mm. 
you plan on having Android app for your website? Uh, I'm not sure exactly. So not for the website in general. I mean, there is a vocabulary trainer that we have and we use Memorize. Uh, that works on Android. Mm. Otherwise, I'm not sure what exactly. Like not for the website itself. Um, Kan du uttale forskjell mellom sju og tjua? Ja, ok, så det er sju, ok, det er sj, 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 like in fish in English, and tjua, so that is a sound that does not exist in in English. But there is a pronunciation video on this YouTube channel that explains this TJ sound. Mara, kunne du fortelle noe om slike konstruksjoner som ved å gjøre noe og uten å gjøre noe? Brukes disse konstruksjonene ofte i tale? Nei, jeg vil si det er mest skriftlig. Altså man skriver det, man sier det ikke så ofte. Ja, det er ikke så... Det er ikke så... Vanskelig. Ella, so you look tired. Are you okay? Take good care of you. Yeah, no, thanks. I'm fine. Do I look tired? Maybe it's the light. Maybe it's also my hair. You see, I have a corona cut, I mean, no cut. I somehow need to find out. There is no hairdresser anymore, really. So they're not allowed to open. So, yeah, so no, otherwise, thank you for your care. Uh, Ken, I am experiencing a delay. Yes, I know. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, what if I get it? Just post crazy for what it is worth. The wise guys in a cappella group in the Dutch. I thought I've spoken there. It's in good German. Yeah, yeah. Any Norwegian ones? Hmm. Um, like spontaneously? No. To be honest, I, I, I don't have an idea. Uh, I have to say. <laughs> um, Maybe you can just uh, look for something on YouTube, like maybe Nosk Musik a cappella, something like that. Um, but to be honest, right now, spontaneously, I don't have, I don't have an idea. Hvor mange mennesker har COVID-19 i Norge? Er det riktig? Ja, grammatisk er det riktig. Men jeg vet ikke hvor mange det er i dag. Um, there are so many sibilant spellings in Norwegian. Do all those ways to spell sh have original variants, or are they based on historical differences? That's historical. You know, it's not so much to do with regional variation. Mm, but all the sh is the same. So whether you write like S J or S K J, uh, that's always the that's always the same. Okay. Are there any more questions? Um, otherwise, we can slowly wrap that up. Mm, but uh, again, I will just stay here for one or two minutes. And otherwise, um, I guess I will see some of you next week in the, in the Language Cafe. Mm. And if you have any questions, you can also get in touch with us at our email address. So if there is anything in your looking for you know, some information about uh, courses that uh, you can't find or, or something else. Um, uh, Norwegian short stories, uh, actually we have been thinking of writing some because there's very little, unfortunately, but uh, maybe we'll do this. Um, Alfred, yeah, that's nice to hear. Okay, cool. Uh, I hope I'll see you again soon. <clears throat> Yeah, okay, so if there are no more questions, then I guess uh, we will finish for today. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for your time. Um, stay safe, stay at home. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess I will see some of you here again soon. And maybe we can also do this kind of live stream again, in, uh, uh, maybe next week or the week after that. And, uh, if there is more questions, um, then just let me know. Again, you can find me on email or you can also comment under this uh, video. Uh, I think you can even watch the live stream again tomorrow. 
Uh, aspirants and more, uh, that's a bit difficult at the beginning, I would say. B1 and up, it's good, but below that, it might be a bit uh, frustrating. Um, okay, yeah, tusen takk uh, for i dag, og jeg håper at vi, uh, at vi snakkes snart, og dere må ha en, en fin kveld. Ja, ha det bra!